Hi, this is Bradley David Good, and today I'm going to show you how to compare mortgage refinancing offers and to make sense of all those numbers. And I'll give you a free download in the link below of a spreadsheet that you can just plug in simple numbers and I'll show you how to use it and to compare the different loans that you're shopping. And I'll also show you how much you would save if you refinanced versus keeping your current loan. Here we go. All right, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is type shop mortgage refinancing rates into your search engine. I went to bank rate and filled out a bunch of applications there. Nerd wallet, lending tree, and maybe some other ones. There's Zillow. I'm not sure if I used that for some reason. I think it was not in my best interest. I don't know why. Anyway, once you do that, you'll have all these people contact you and give you offers. And then what you're going to want to do is go to my downloads page at the link below and download this mortgage refi spreadsheet. Now, if it just blinks on you and doesn't download, go up here to the address bar in Chrome and click the lock, then site settings, then scroll down and change this ins insecure content to allow. That's just for this website, for my website. So it's not opening up everything. Uh, and then you'll be able to download it. So then you click download and open this spreadsheet. Now let's take a look at this. I have refinance compares. This is a good note here. Record the date of your first credit inquiry. So the first lender that you contact will do a pool on your credit report and you'll have 30 days of unlimited mortgage inquiries that will have no impact on your credit. So get this done within 30 days. Some of the lenders, this is one of the tools they will use, they will imply or try to imply that too many pools on your credit report will damage your credit. This is not true. Um, I think ev for everyone, it's 30 days. And so I would not worry about that. And so the other advice I would give is to deal with the person you least expect to sign with first, because you're going to learn a lot from that person and you'll want that knowledge and experience to deal with all the rest. So I have a spreadsheet here. Let's, let's look through it. And I have the name of the lender at the top and then the contact name, their phone number. I have a block for questions to ask so you can keep in there what you want to ask them the next time you talk to them and then notes on what you already talked to with them. And then the important stuff is here. So is it an FHA or conventional loan, a fixed or an ARM? ARM is not something you should be looking at in this environment because there's such low interest rates that I think the only thing you should be considering is a 15 year really fixed rate the difference between a 15 year fixed and an ARM is so little that most lenders are not even selling the ARMs. When interest rates are really high, ARMs make more sense if you're going to get out of the loan um, early. Adjustable rate mortgage is what that stands for. It can adjust, the rate can adjust year to year. So I have here loan amount next. So that's the total loan amount you're going to be taking. The term loan amount would include any cash out above what you owe on your previous mortgages or current mortgages. The loan term is how many years? 15, 30. The rate is not the APR. This is the rate. Then there's the APR, cash out, closing costs, total closing costs. And I'll show you where to get all this information 
you're only going to be needing to plug in a few of these numbers, maybe four or five. So once you are contacted by the lenders, you're going to want to ask them for a loan estimate and you'll get these PDFs. And some of them will tell you that you need to pay them something or you need to lock in with something with them before you get this. Don't pay any attention to that. Tell them that you need a loan estimate. Some of them will give you a link to a website and you'll have to sign that you're receiving electronic documents, but don't continue with the signature into where you lock in. There is a way usually to just sign that you're receiving these documents and then get to the loan estimate and don't continue with anything else. So these loan estimates are, for the most part, they all look very similar like this and tell you all the key things to the loan. And this is how you get the numbers for the spreadsheet. So you get your loan amount here, your interest rate, and then you notice that I had the APR also. That's down here on the third page usually. And then you have your monthly principal and interest, which is calculated in my spreadsheet, but this is good to be able to look at what it is in here and verify that the spreadsheet got it correctly. Then you have your estimated escrow here. This is your taxes and homeowner's insurance and your estimated monthly payment. Then here's where you get your total closing costs and your cash out, if you're getting cash out. And then the closing costs are broken down here and each lender has a bunch of different line items. It's really important what the total closing costs are and it's important that they have in here basically the same amount of prepaids because this is your home owner and your interest and taxes your prepaid stuff should look generally the same from loan to loan some lenders might skimp on that i haven't seen that but i heard about that so with these all these other ones like the title I've, I saw a title for 2700 on one of these expensive loans so they can pad any of these that they want and you can compare them I wouldn't get into battling with them about line items here I would just keep talking about the total closing costs and that includes paying down points if if you're going to pay down points so here's $328 in paying down points, which means you're paying up front a fee to lower the interest rate over the life of the loan. So that's another thing you can play with as you shop for loans. Now let's look at this other one. This guy, he didn't want to give me the standard form. And I told him that by email and this is after maybe six other lenders gave me the same standard form you just saw and I was able to compare them easily with each other. This guy didn't want to do that. So I emailed him and said, I, I want to see the standard you know, loan estimate. And he's saying, See this here? This closing cost worksheet does not, here's their disclaimer, the loan estimate you will receive once you apply for a loan. So he wanted me to pay something or to lock into something and he wasn't willing to send me the loan estimate. So I told him, I don't want to deal with you anymore. Everybody else did, so you're out of, you're, you're out of my list. And that's how that went. So just know, there are going to lots of these people pushed me and said you need to close or your rate may change you, you know you got to do this by midnight one person was telling me so I got their information in the afternoon and they wanted me to sign up and pay five hundred dollars before midnight they're going to want to pressure you but rates don't change that often 
and rates I don't think are going to change and go up very soon, especially before the end of the year. So just keep that in mind. I wouldn't start this shopping process at a time when rates are going to change. I would do it when you're not worried about it and you have 30 days. You know, you may have, if you go longer than a few days, you may have to ask people to give you a new, a new one of these loan estimates, but that's not, a, shouldn't be a problem. They should, they should be able to regenerate one for you. Some of them may act like that's a problem or when you send one to another, this happened to me also, when you send one lender, lender's loan estimate to another lender, they may have a problem with how many days old it was. They're just making up all this stuff to pressure you into going with their loan and not give you enough time to evaluate everything. This is something I wanna say. This is the most expensive purchase most people make, and you should take your time and evaluate it and understand it. And don't be afraid of the numbers and the money. Take your time, use my spreadsheet, ask questions of people you know who are good with finances, and don't run away from the money because it makes a huge difference in the end when you pay this over the course of 15 or 30 years. All right, let's go back to the spreadsheet. Monthly payment of principal and interest, monthly mortgage insurance premium, that's still only for the FHA loans, estimated monthly escrow. This is just an estimate, so each lender will estimate it differently depending on what numbers they got from you for your taxes and um, things like that. So it may vary from loan to loan. It's not considered in my calculations really, except for the total monthly payment. So you have to look at that. If it's a difference in the escrow, it could vary with the monthly payment. But what you really want to look at is your monthly payment with principal interest and mortgage insurance premium, because that's what changes from loan to loan, whereas the escrow should be the same for every loan once they figure it out from real numbers. All right, then when we come when we come down here, so you're going to plug in all of these numbers up here. You're going to put in FHA. Sorry about that. You're going to put in FHA or fixed the loan amount, the term, the rate, the APR cash out, closing costs, and it's going to calculate everything else from there down. And you get these numbers from loan estimates that the lenders send to you, and I will show you one of them uh, in a few minutes. All right. So now I can look at my monthly payment. I can look at, here's the, here's the big ones here. Do you want to keep this loan for, let's just say you're getting a 30 year loan um, or a 15 year loan. So we'll look at the second one. If you're getting a 15 year, year loan, do you expect to keep this loan for 15 years? Or do you expect that you may refinance in one year for some reason? For me, I have a couple things on my credit that makes me a medium credit right now. I have good credit, but not excellent credit. So I plan on refinancing most likely if rates are better and the deal is better and it makes sense. I'll use this spreadsheet two years from now because these things will fall off my credit report in two years and I'll have excellent credit. So, you can look at the, I have these costs here, this real cost of the loan, and I'll explain that in a minute, but I have them at one year, two year, five year, and 10 year. And you could calculate the 15 year or the 30 year by using these same formulas if you like. But what happens is once you see the trend of where it's going in 10 years, you'll be able to compare the loans and you really won't need to know 
what the other amounts are at the end of the loan unless you really want to. You'll be able to choose your loan. So let's look at these numbers. This first number is the one year total principal and interest. So this is 12 payments or one year of the principal and interest, which in this case is 1163 and the mortgage insurance premium if it's FHA, 185 here. So 12 months of that, and then closing costs, total closing costs, which in this case was 12,925. This is the least desired loan that I started with. Um, and this guy was not someone I would wanna deal with at all. He became actually old school, sales, confusing, uh, talking about everything but the real numbers, refused to send me uh, real loan estimates that I wanted in the end. So I stopped talking to him. But it was good to start out with him. And he, his is by far the highest priced loan, I think, that I saw. And so, yeah, I think it was. So if you look down here, the total closing cost 12,925. So we're going to add the, t this is, I'm trying to figure out in 12 months, how much is this loan going to cost you? So it's going to cost you the total closing cost when you sign the papers on this loan, plus every payment that you make for 12 months, principal and interest. We don't care about your escrow to your to your taxes and your home insurance because that's going to be the same for any loan so we're not even considering that and then when we add up the total closing costs and 12 monthly payments of principal and interest and mortgage insurance premium if you go fha um, let's talk about fha for one second that would be to get a lower rate and or if you have not so great credit, but uh, I had good credit and it was more advantageous for me to go with the 15 year fixed conventional than FHA because I'm not paying mortgage insurance premium on that loan and the rate is actually lower most cases but I have a higher payment because it's a 15 year loan. But the benefit of that is that you pay less interest over the loan and you pay more into your principal, which pays off your loan balance quicker. So you owe less on loan quicker. In every payment, you're paying more to the real price of the loan to get your loan down. All right, so we take the total closing costs plus 12 monthly payments minus, and here's the key, minus how much you're paying into the principal because that money's really coming back to you. Because if you go sell your house or you go refinance again at that one year mark, you are going to owe less on the property. So that money we're going to subtract out of your payments and your closing costs. So closing costs plus payments minus principal paid total. So total payments and closing costs on this first loan in one year is 29,000. Principal paid is 6,000. The ratio between principal paid and the cost, which would be 6,000 to 29,000 is 21%. So I'm only paying 21% into my principal on that loan. Now, if you look at this 15 year loan, and so my total cost on that loan is 29,000 minus 62. Right, so that gives me 22,902. So I'm only paying 21% down. Okay, and I 
that cost me twenty two thousand I'm only paying six thousand down in the principal on that loan in one year whereas if we look at this 15 year loan I'm paying thirty two thousand I'm paying more in payments over that year but almost about half of that or 44 percent of that goes into principal so my real cost on that loan for one year is only 18,000. As we move down here, I have the two year working the same way. You see that it goes, the total cost goes from 22 to 32 on that one and from 18 to 24. And then we go to five year, 61, 39 and 10 year, 104 for that loan for 10 years and 57 for that loan in 10 years. Okay, imagine what it is in 15 years or 30. All right, so then I went across here and you can see I, call, I, I contacted as many lenders as I could for a while and including on these websites also include your current mortgage lender and your current bank that you use or even other banks that you know of that you like. Um, so that's what I did and uh, you can see across here some of them I made notes some of them dropped off and uh, they never really followed up on me that well or I just stopped following up on them because I was narrowing it down and then what I did was with some of them I sent their offers to the other ones and back and forth like that so that they worked uh, against each other but my best ones I highlighted or have a light green background here so I'm going to hide these other cells and show you the three green ones okay so we have better mortgage new federal and Franklin Mint Federal Credit Union that's my current bank and credit union is a really good bet for many reasons and your current bank is more likely to give you uh, a better offer and i can go visit these people by driving a half an hour down the road the person who i was working for the refi is 30 minutes down the road and my local branch is right here in town so there's benefits to working with your own bank and if you ever want to buy a second property for an investment or a vacation home or something uh, uh, it would be very good to be with your own bank because they already like you and they already know a lot about you so let's look at these three loans we have this first one the total loan amount is 280 and that's because I owe about 200 on my first my current mortgages so you can see here I have a current primary loan uh, uh, it was original amount of 204 and 48 I currently owe 160 on this first one and 40 on this second one so you can see even here with this 7.79 percent interest rate I started out with forty eight thousand dollars in 09 and I've only paid down eight thousand dollars of it it's really difficult to pay down a loan that's a 30-year loan until you get to the end of the loan you pay a lot of we'll look at this this tab in a, in a few minutes but let's stay here for now so my loan amount is 280 on these first two and that's because I need to pay off 200 that I owe on these other loans and then I get cash out and I have to cover my closing costs so the cash out on this first one so my rate is 2625 on this first one 3 on the second one and 2875 on the last one so I need to consider that but when you look at just these numbers by themselves it's hard to compare these loans to each other because you see they're all 15 year loans. This one only wanted to give me 262,000 as top amount. 
So I guess they're more conservative. So you can see that the cash out ranges 66, 74, and 54. And the total closing cost ranges 12, 5, 5, and 7, 7. And so the monthly payment for principal interest is 1884, 1934, 1797. So these are all things you're going to want to consider. But I, th I would say the most important thing is these dark blue boxes down here. So, as a <clears throat> excuse me, as and you see the escrow, they were estimating different prices here. So I really can't go by this payment here. I need to really compare these payments and just know that my real payment's going to be, you know, $300 more than that a month to cover my taxes and homeowners insurance but it would be the same for each loan for this line all right so as i go down here i can see that the first loan in one year pays down 43 percent of my principal and second one 52 so that one's pretty attractive because i'm paying more principal down and so is this one so these two are the most attractive to me right now and then i look at the one year cost and i'm not planning on doing anything in one year but you never know you might sell your house and move to jamaica and so it's worth looking at and this one's the lowest. This one's a lot more, you see that? So this is total cost. This is all my payments plus my co closing costs minus my principal paid. In two years, you see how the things change a little bit, right? This, these two get closer now. They were spread out a little bit more. And then five years, and now this loan all of a sudden in 10 years looks better and in the beginning it didn't look as good see that 13 and 15 now let's look at the first loan on the left so that one is actually better than the middle one as it goes on so for you you may be look, wanting to look at this 10 year and know how it's going to range because basically you cover your closing costs no matter what they were, unless they were really ranged far from each other, you're going to cover your closing costs by the 10 year mark. And you're going to start to really see what the loans looks like in the long term. So I really like this one on the right here. And it looks good to me at all the break points here. So that's the loan. I ended up going with and we're going to click over to the second tab refi savings this is going to show me how much i'll save by going with the refinancing loan versus staying in my current loan or loans i have two loans and the first one that you can see you're going to need to call your lenders and ask for the origination date which is the date the loan started and then the original loan amount, not the amount that you owe, not the payoff amount, what the original loan amount was. On this one, 204, I currently owe 160 on that one. On this one, 48, I owe currently 40. So you can see that I've been paying for 11 years on this 30 year loan at this almost 8%. I've only paid off $8,000 of that loan in 11 years. So these 30 year loans are not really good to have 15 year is much better. So once I calculate all that, this is automatically calculated the interest paid. So what I do is I take use these complicated Excel formulas and I take the interest that would have been paid over the entire loan for 30 years minus the interest that I've already paid up until today, which gives me the interest that would be paid if I kept the loan from today 
till the end of the loan, and these loans would end in 2039 here. So if I add both those together, I would pay $129,000 in interest if I kept those loans until the end of their life. Now, there is no closing cost to do that or anything like that, so that's the cost of keeping that loan. Everything else is getting paid down in principal or paying off my house. So then on the refi loan, I put in the original loan amount, the term, and the rate, and the closing costs have to be figured in here because that's a cost that I have. And then the interest that I'm gonna pay, if I keep it until the end, now you'll notice this one ends sooner than the 30-year loan would have. So I'm, I have a note here, I'm paying it off three years earlier due to the 15-year loan instead of the 30-year loan. So you need to look at that. When would your original loan have been paid off versus the other one? And that's part of your decision. So I take this 129 minus my closing costs minus my interest paid on the new loan and I come up with this savings of $60,000 over the course of the next 15 years. I will save that money with this new loan. And that's how I made my decision on this loan. And I hope this makes it a lot easier for you. If you have any questions, let me know. If you think there's anything else to add to these spreadsheets, let me know and uh, have a great day.